Hi, I'm the Oaks, and that's Sir Walter. Let's go on an adventure. Hello and welcome to another episode here of Hiking with Walter on the Hard Life of Walter the Dog YouTube channel. We're again going out here zooming in into the New Mexico region and Hobbs and we're going back to the road towards the monument and the dirt road that leads to our oil wells. We're going to go a little different today. Here is Walter, still off a leash, as you usually do at the start when we know the area is not fully invested with rattlesnakes. And here, Walter and our second one, Virginia, are playing and sniffing and doing their thing. We are not quite sure yet. The kid determines the pace and direction. We're not quite sure yet where we're headed yet. Um, he sees the oil well from last time there in the background. But we are staying on this side of the power line. There are a lot of lizards in this area and the dogs love to chase those. Um, of course they also would like to chase a rattlesnake but that is off limits to them. So now we are going to hit south. Um, what we have here is sort of a little bit of a lower lying area um, where the grass is greener. We have a lot more mesquite and it's sort of a little green artery that leads from the road and where we park in in a westerly direction um, we actually have encountered a quite sizable rattlesnake in this area and we're extremely cautious here um, trying to avoid the tall grass as much as we can usually um, so that the dogs don't get bit by a rattlesnake um, our safety precaution there but as you can see that it's not always happening and the dogs have their own mind <laughs> going various ways. So the kid has made the decision. We are heading further south in this case. Um, Walter here not in the lead which is quite upsetting to him. He loves to be in the front. Um, now that he is on leash more Virginia has taken that leadership role up for the dog pack. one of those larger mesquite trees I would actually say even though usually they're just bushes um, there is actually a bird that nested in that tree and there's a second tree further up here that we probably will see as well um, where we have a bird nesting the birds are very defensive here's the little ones there's a large body of crows in the area and they are attacking the crows whenever they get too close to their nests. And we had, at least on two occasions, birds buzzing very close over our heads because we were getting too close to their nests. The trees that we just passed here on our right, that does have a bird in bird's nest in it. And um, that bird's parent said is very defensive about uh, people and animals getting too close. We found here some cow bones. 
there are on three or four sets of cow bones that we have discovered throughout the years hiking here. Uh, we don't know what happened to these cows. They're quite old actually, whether it's one animal or two. There's no skull, just fragments of the bodies, usually some pieces of spine, leg, bones, uh, rib bones, and jaw bones. But no skull or like really like the rib cage of the animal. Um, so again, we're not sure what happened with these animals. Uh, we suspect in one or two cases potentially poaching activity in some form because we found a bone that almost looked like it was sawed through, like a very clear, clean cut through the bone. But we do know there's also some coyotes in the area and they may have brought down the animal. There is a cactus. There has been a lot of growth of these ton cactuses throughout this part of New Mexico. Um, they're usually hidden. We haven't, we sort of always stumble on them and are like, oh, there's a cactus right there. They're not very tall. In most cases, they're about an inch or so out of the ground. There are some new ones that are starting to pop up. And um, depending on where we are, there's an abundance and growth of them coming in. Um, we suspect, and um, if somebody knows this, and please comment about it, we were thinking that because there's been very dry in the region in the last few months and years, that we're seeing a lot more of these cactuses appearing as the, as the desert dries up, grass dies, mesquite bushes die. And, you know, we have more of these cactuses in takeover who are better suited for this type of desert environment here. Uh, we're now on our way back. We also have watermelon. We have a lot of watermelon in this area. We don't know how. How they get there. There's also sunflowers. Um, not on the hike, but on along the roadsides. And there's actually some watermelon. Some of them, like, about fist size, usually. We found one that... Probably was about five to seven inch in diameter. And we brought it home and cut it open and it there was nothing in it. There was no red meat to it at all. So the bushes here grow watermelon, but unfortunately because of the drought situation, it just they're not prospering, they're not good quality or the wild ones. So we're now on the way back. This is, this is oil pump number one. And we're just trying to get out of the heat now and get back to the car and back into air conditioning. So thank you for watching this episode of The Hard Life of Walter the Dog, Hiking with Walter. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Please like and subscribe to the video. And leave a comment if you want to know more or have other questions or would like to know more about Walter.